Tales of Tomorrow. What happens when an unknown writer finds himself faced with the choice between a brilliant career and the loss of his wife? Who was his mysterious collaborator? Tonight, Tales of Tomorrow presents Ghost Writer, starring Leslie Nielsen, with Gabby Rogers and Murray Matheson. Is it? Me, honey, open up. Oh. <laughs> Hello, honey. Hello. What are you doing home so early? It's all right. Lou said I could. I thought I'd bring you something to eat. Oh, good. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <sighs> How's it coming? Well, it's bigger and heavier. I suppose it should be after six months' work gone into it. Oh, six months will pay dividends. Johnny, don't you ever get scared? I mean, it's been a year since I left the agency to start writing, and all I've got to show for it is one short story published in a magazine no one's ever heard of. This, these things take time. Now, this novel will sell. <laughs> <laughs> Great. In the meantime, you spend ten hours a day behind the cigar counter smiling at tired businessmen. Ah, uh, don't worry about me. I'm not complaining, am I? I don't see how you stand it, honey. Living in this hovel. Debts piling up. Oh, come on. Eat something. I brought you some nice sandwiches. Oh, boy. Oh, here's a letter for you. I just picked it up. Oh? <coughs> <coughs> ah. Well, who's it from? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just a rejection slip. Now, that's not a rejection slip. Did you answer that ad in the Sunday paper? Well, yes, I did, honey. Look, it's, it's a job, isn't it? It's a chance to make money by writing. But not that way, not with... Not, not collaborating with someone else. But the ad says he's, he's, a, he's a known author. He's willing to give his time and experience to work with an unknown. You send him some stories, I suppose. Well, sure, why not? Here, look, listen. Listen to what he says. Dear Mr. Tyler, I found your work of high caliber and would like to speak to you about your future, about future collaboration. I'll be at home for the next few days. Please call. What's his name? Morton, Lee Morton, 94 Grove Street, New York. Look, honey, this may be the big break. It's an opportunity, an opportunity to, to work with someone with a good reputation. You don't need anyone else if you just gave yourself a chance. Look, Johnny, this may be money, maybe lots of it. Look, Bert, I know, but money is not important now. It's your work that's important. And you're so good at it. If you just gave yourself a chance, uh, and you can't go flying off on a tangent the minute the going gets a little rough. Oh, sweetheart. Now finish what you started. Stick to the novel. Well, I don't need to throw it over. Maybe I can do both. But you tried that, remember? You got nowhere on the novel while you were working at the agency. You just didn't have the time. Now, Bird, we made a bargain, remember? We said we'd try it this way for two years, no matter what. Well, honey, look, we need the money. To... Oh, Bird, if you quit now, you're admitting defeat. That mustn't happen. It mustn't happen. Okay. All right, you win. No collaboration. Uh, <laughs> oh, you won't regret it, Bert. <laughs> now I've got to get back to the store, and you get working alone. I almost forgot the most important thing. The rent's due today. Will you take it to Mrs. Graham? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. And here's some money for yourself, in case you want a beer or something later. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye, honey. 
I see you later tonight. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Morton there, Mr. Lee Morton, please. Speaking. Oh, uh, how do you do? My name is Bert Tyler. I, I got your letter this morning? Yeah, well, I, I would like to make an appointment as soon as possible. must be Mr. Tyler. How nice of you to be so prompt. Mr. Morton, Mr. Lee Morton. That's right. Come in, won't you? Oh, Please come in. Thank you. Well, this is, this is quite a studio you have here. You like it? Well, I, I don't know. I've never been in a place like this before. It has a, quite an air about it, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yes. Yes, it certainly has. Oh, excuse me. I hope you don't no, no, mind, no, my lord. Not at all. I, I travel about too much to really call any one place home, but this has always been my favorite. Could I get you a drink? Oh, no, no. No, thank you. Not just yet. I've read your stories. I like the way you express yourself. Oh. <laughs> but sit down, won't you? Oh, thank you. I think we can work something out. Oh, do you mind if I... No, no, not, not at all. Uh, just exactly what did you have in mind? Well, I've been a successful author for quite a long time, but I'm getting older. All the stories are still there, the ideas still flow, but they don't come fast enough. Right now, I'm far behind schedule. I need an assistant. I see. Uh, well, what financial arrangement uh, would there be? I'll pay you $500 for every story you finish for me. $500? Yes, uh, you see these? They're all incomplete. Stories I started but couldn't finish. Well, that doesn't sound hard. You, you supply the plot and I, I, I get the ending. I have a market that will buy anything we produce. Yes, but how can you be sure of me? I mean, uh, well, maybe our ideas won't mix. No, no, no. I, I've seen enough. But just to satisfy us, I'll... I'll put you to a test. A test? <laughs> well, what do I have to do? This is a story that has to be finished tonight. You see, I have certain deadlines to make. I'll give you a brief summary, and you can supply the end. All right, fire away. Now, this is about a nightclub singer by the name of Margot King. She's been going around with two men, a cafe society playboy and a young composer. She finds that she is in love with the young composer, but the playboy won't leave her alone. One night, she gets an urgent message from the wealthy boy saying he must see her at once. Against her better judgment, she goes to his apartment, finds him quite intoxicated. They get into a bitter argument. He threatens her. Suddenly, the composer appears in the room. The two men begin to fight. 
the playboy draws a gun. You finish it. Well, let's see. Uh, in the struggle, uh, the gun goes off accidentally, uh, short-circuiting the electrical system. Right. The, uh, three people are just shadows in a darkened room. Uh, suddenly, something moves, the gun fires again, and Margot falls dead. Very good. Uh, the composer springs at the drunken killer, the gun fires again, uh, critically, critically wounding the composer, and uh, he summons up his last bit of strength and strangles the killer with hands that were meant to write symphony. Excellent. Excellent. You see how easy it is. <laughs> you, you really like it? Why, of course, my boy. It's life. It's life. That's all that matters. You shall begin on it at once. Now, I want two stories completed before the day is out. You'll find everything you need in here. He's late tonight. He'll be along soon. Writers. Why'd you ever marry a writer, Johnny? <laughs> they keep the craziest hours. I've got no regrets. Someday he'll be famous. You watch. I hope you're right. Johnny, you're one in a million. Well, I gotta get home. Lock up for me, will you? Right, Lou, as soon as Bert gets here. Give your Ernest Hemingway my best. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the morning papers are here. Set them out for me, will you? Right, Lou, after I straighten that rack. Well, good night. Good night. Johnny! Oh. <laughs> oh, Bert, where have you been? You're so late. It's okay, it's, I got good news. Here, look. Get all the money. Thousand dollars. Count it. And it's all ours, honey. Every cent. I asked you where you got the money. Oh, well, I, uh, from that, that author, Morton. Look, two short stories. I just finished at five hundred dollars apiece. You went to see him after you gave me your word? Oh, honey, honey, what does it matter? Look, it's money, money, money. You... I finally sold something, honey. You broke your promise to me. Now, how could you? Where are you going? I don't know, but away from you. Honey, oh. Leave me alone. Did you hurt yourself? Yes. Hurt your leg? Here, put it up here. Good, what's the matter? Why, oh, these... These headlines... Uh, it can't be, it can't be. Beautiful Margot King. Prominent nightclub entertainer. And two suitors die in weird triangle. Playboy and composer kill each other in jealous rage after entertainer is slain. That's my idea. It's my book. It's my ending. <laughs> Before continuing with the second act of Ghost Writer, here's some TV program news from ABC. Entertainment, good time. This has become synonymous with Saturday night, and Saturday night entertainment over the new ABC TV adds up to a good time. Tomorrow night, see Paul Whiteman's TV Teen Club swing out in a tuneful review starring talented teenagers in song, dance, and laugh routines. Pops Whiteman has the youngsters polished to brilliant performances. Later on, it's hard-hitting action with Ike Williams and Vic Cardell on Saturday Night Fights. You get a ringside seat as these high-ranking fighters meet in the 10-round main event. Watch Ike Williams battle Vic Cardell on Saturday Night Fights over most of these ABC TV stations. Then stick around for up-to-the-date news on the boxing world with Don Dumphy, noted ABC boxing commentator and popular sports columnist Red Smith. The pair come up on Fight Talks with a roundup of ring lore and main event sports stories. Watch Fight Talks tomorrow night over most of these ABC TV stations. 
Now back to the second act of Ghost Rider, starring Leslie Nielsen. Well, there's no answer. I guess he's still not home. I don't like it. He was supposed to call you two days ago. Yeah, I know, I know. We must find him and return that money. Yeah, okay, okay. Look, I, I said I'd do it, so let's, let's forget about it. I still don't see what the crime is in accepting money for work that I actually did. Except there's something wrong with money that comes that easily. You might get involved with something that's horrible. You write a story in the afternoon and it all comes true in headlines six hours later. Yeah, all right, all right, sweetheart. It's just a coincidence now, that's all. And it all really happens down to the last detail, even the names are the same? Well, it'll never happen again, not in a million years. Now, how can you be so sure of that, Bert? I'm almost afraid to pick up a newspaper. Will all the stories that you finish for him end in some terrible tragedy? Oh, no, no, the, the second one I wrote, it's altogether different. Centers around some hotel out in California. Not the Hotel Maynard in Palm Springs. Yes, that's it. That burned down last night. Forty people were killed. It's in the afternoon paper. No. No, it, it, it couldn't happen. It couldn't happen. But it has. What's happening? Now, look, Bert, I was afraid to tell you this before, but now I feel that I have to. I checked up on Lee Morton. I called the Authors League and the International Writers Guild. No one has ever heard of him. What's he like, Bert? What do you know about him? Well, there's nothing special about him. He's, he's just a middle-aged, successful writer, travels a good deal. Now, you're not to work for him again, understand? Now, you gave me your promise two days ago, and I almost walked out on you. But I'm still here and willing to go on. But if you ever collaborate with him again, I'm leaving. Oh, now, Joan, honey. Now, you don't mean that. It's the truth, Bert. I'm dead serious. It's not just you and me now. There's something much worse involved. Something we can't even begin to understand. Okay. Look, I'm going to run over to his place right now and call the whole thing off. I'm going to return this money to him. Good. It's the only way, Bert. We don't need Lee Morton in our lives. So you better take your coat. It's coming down. Yeah, okay. You going to the store today? Yeah, I promised Lou I'd stop in for a few hours. Pick me up about six. Okay, I'll pick you up at Lou's, honey. So long. Bert... Promise me it's all right. Sure it is. You can count on it. Honey, I give my word. Bye-bye. Bye. I was just about to call you. Mr. Morton, I came here to tell you I can't do any more work for you. But I don't understand. Well, those, those two stories I finished for you, the, the fire and the murders, well, they came true. They actually happened. You don't say. What an amazing coincidence. What do you mean, coincidence? I finished two stories for you right here in the studio and they come true right down to the last detail. Now, how do you explain it? I can't explain it. I don't concern myself with trivia. I'm too busy. Now, let's get back to work. Trivia? Listen, there's something strange going on around here. 
I want to know what it is. Look, your imagination's working overtime. Put it to good use on our stories. You'll find you'll make a great deal of money that way. No, no. No, I can't. And I'm... I'm returning your... money. Look, I like the way we work together. I don't want to lose you. You no. must write me just one more story. No, no, I can't. Just one more. I'll double the price. I'll give you $1,000 for one more ending. $1,000? Sure, sure. No one has to know. I'll send it direct to your bank if you wish. No, no, no. I gave my word. Just one story. A very short one. Look, look, this one. An escape. Someone running away from an impossible situation. A taxicab crash. An unidentified person. The details are all here. It just needs tying together. A thousand dollars, Bert. One thousand lovely crisp dollars. I may be crazy, but I can't turn down that kind of money. That's the spirit. You'll have it finished in no time. Joan Tyler. Is my husband there? Oh, Mrs. Tyler. I've heard such a lot about you. I'm looking forward to our meeting. Is my husband still there? Yes, he's here. Well, may I speak to him, please? He must have forgotten to meet me. Oh, I'm afraid that's my fault, Mrs. Tyler. He's doing some work for me. W what did you say? Another story. He should be finished shortly. But he gave me his word. Put him on the phone, please. Oh, not just now, Mrs. Tyler. It's a very important piece. He's not working for you again. He couldn't be. Oh, but he is. Listen. How's it coming, Bert? Oh, it's just one more page and I'm finished. This one's easy. Did you hear that? Bert. Bert. Is there any message? No. No message. Well, there it is, all finished, just as we discussed it. The taxi cab uh, skids and smacks into the superstructure of the Arlington Bridge, and the woman's killed instantly. Fine, fine. This calls for a drink. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got to run. I have to meet my wife at the store. Jeez, I'm 20 minutes late already. Oh, by the way, your wife just phoned. What'd you tell her? Oh, I just mentioned that you were working on another story for me. I didn't want her to know. I'd better get over there right away. Bert! Bert, wait! <sighs> Foolish boy. He didn't even wait for his money. Hi, Lou. Uh, isn't John here? She's gone. Well, I, I was supposed to meet her here. She's awful sore at you, Bert. She was crying. Yeah, well, she leave any message, uh, tell you anything to tell me? Yeah. Something about going back to her folks. Said she was running away from a husband she couldn't trust anymore. Running away from a husband she couldn't trust anymore? It's a story I just finished. How long ago, Jimmy? You just missed her. Well, ha, ha, ha. Did she go? Did she walk? Oh, she took a cab. Hey, what's got into you? Which, do which direction? Toward Mulberry Street? Yeah, Mulberry Street. I saw them start off. They must be down on the bridge by now. Arlington Bridge? Yeah. Joe! <laughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Was that an accident down on the bridge just now? Yes, I was the first one on the scene. Bad? Tragedy. It's so sudden. The car skidded and crashed into the bridge. Woman was killed instantly. Almost as if it were uh, destined. Ah, well, these things happen. Have you any Turkish cigarettes? Sure. They're 35 cents now. The price has gone up. If you want anything badly enough, you pay the price. <laughs>